Hey, what's going on, guys? Today we're going over the fastest T16 build for the Crusader in Season 27. It's capable of sub 1 minute clears and very consistent minute and a half to 2 minute clears. In this video, I'm running 0 Paragon points in strength, no augments, and most of the gear is non-ancient. And it still absolutely blasts T16 rifts. So let's talk about how this build works. First, you have the Fist of the Heavens Crucible Power in Season 27. This reads... Every two seconds, call down Fist of the Heavens on a random nearby enemy. After casting Steed Charge, this effect occurs more rapidly for five seconds. So the whole point is to have permanent Steed Charge for the entire rift while your Fist of the Heavens passively cast all around you. You've got a few cooldown abilities to cast, but for the most part, all you have to do is horse around the map at light speed and pick up loot. The two-piece bonus from Norvald's Fervor will mostly take care of Steed Charge cooldown by itself. It reads... Increases the duration of Steed Charge by 2 seconds. In addition, killing an enemy reduces the cooldown of Steed Charge by 1 second. Then we'll also get a 200% damage increase during Steed Charge and for 5 seconds after it ends. We'll have over 50% cooldown reduction to help with this as well. We'll be running the Aegis of Valor set. The 2-piece bonus is irrelevant here because we are not running Heaven's Fury. But the 4-piece gives up to 50% damage reduction, and the 6-piece increases the damage of Fist of the Heavens by 20,000%. Speaking of damage, Darklight will be ran in the cube weapon slot. It increases the damage of Fist of the Heavens by 1,000% and makes it cast twice. Next up, let's get into the abilities. Most of these abilities are based around increasing movement speed. Iron Skin Flash Iron Skin reduces damage taken by 50% for 4 seconds, and the Flash Rune gives you 60% movement speed for 5 seconds when you take damage while Iron Skin is active. Steed Charge Endurance Steed Charge is really the skill that enables this build. You get a massive movement speed increase, you can move through enemies unhindered, and of course your Fist of the Heavens will be raining down even faster while you're on the horse. The Endurance Rune increases the duration to 3 seconds. I think this makes for an overall smoother rifting experience, but you could run any Steed Charge rune here. Laws of Hope with Wings of Angels rune. Laws of Hope gives passive life regeneration and empowering the law will apply a shield to you and your allies for 5 seconds. But we're mainly running this for the Wings of Angels. This gives a 50% movement increase for 5 seconds when empowering the law. The passive Long Arm of the Law will increase this from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. Akarat's Champion Rally. Akarat's Champion gives you a damage increase and wrath regen. The Rally Rune reduces the cooldown of all of our other abilities by 12 seconds when it's used. Alternatively, you can run the Prophet Rune for an armor increase and an additional cheat death. Provoke Flee Fool. This causes enemies to flee in fear, proccing the Rochelle's Ring of Larceny for additional movement speed. You obviously need to be near enemies to use this, otherwise it will have no effect. And that brings us to Fist of the Heavens. Our passively cast Fist of the Heavens will take on any rune that we have on our bar. And honestly, you could run any of them and blast T16. Divine Well is probably the best overall for its coverage, but seriously use whichever rune you enjoy the most. This video has clips with Divine Well, Retribution, Fissure, and Heaven's Tempest. I personally enjoy the fire rune Heaven's Tempest the most for the visual effect. Next up, let's take a look at the passives. Heavenly Strength allows you to wield a two-handed weapon and a shield. This is needed to run the Norvald's Fervor, two-handed flail, and shield. Long Arm of the Law like we already discussed, this doubles the duration of Laws of Hope. Indestructible is the Crusader's Cheat Death passive. This isn't necessary if you aren't playing hardcore. You could run something like Lord Commander if you feel like Steed Charge is not off cooldown enough. And the last passive is Finery. This gives 1.5% increased strength per gem socketed into gear. Next up, let's take a look at the gear. And again, my gear really is not very good. I will have a D3 planner link in the video description with exact stats you're looking for on each individual piece. So we're running five pieces of the Aegis of Valor set, the boots, pants, gloves, shoulders, and chest piece, and then the Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube to get the six piece bonus. We're running the Norvald's Fervor set, so the two-handed flail, and then the shield, the Rochelle's Ring of Larceny, again for the movement speed when you fear an enemy, and you want to try to look out for a chance to fear on hit as a secondary on pieces of gear to get this to proc more often than just using Provoke. Then you get the Stone of Jordan. Each of your element's damage bonus is equal to your highest static elemental bonus to skill. 
So kind of the nice thing about this is it allows you to swap out runes on Fist of the Heavens if you want to without having to swap your gear around as well. Got the gold wrap belt. As soon as you start picking up gold, you're pretty much going to be invulnerable. This is going to be paired with the Boon of the Hoarder legendary gem. And then you're going to run an Avarice Band on your Enchantress, and that is going to emanate to your character to get really insane pickup radius. For Bracers, we've got the Warzeshian Arm Guards. Every time you destroy a wreckable object, you gain a short burst of speed. This is going to be happening constantly with the Fists of the Heavens going all over the place. Squirt's Necklace. Up to 100% damage increase if you haven't taken damage recently. This is relatively easy to keep up. You're going to drop it from time to time, but you're moving around so much and moving so fast that you're going to have this damage increase a lot. And then for the helmet slot, we've got the Leoric's Crown. Increases the effect of any gem socketed into the item by up to 100%, and then it doesn't affect legendary gems. So we have, of course, a cooldown reduction gem in the helmet, and this is going to increase that even more. For legendary gems, of course, we got the Boon of the Hoarder like we already talked about. You get extra gold, and you also get movement speed when you pick up gold. We got the Zay Stone of Vengeance that gives you a damage increase the farther away enemies are from you. And this is going to be really beneficial for the build because, again, as you see in the gameplay, there's damage going on all over the place really far away from your character. So Zay's is a perfect choice for this build. And then I'm actually running the Wreath of Lightning as my third legendary gem. This is just here for that secondary effect. So 15% chance on hit to gain a Wreath of Lightning, and then while you have the Wreath of Lightning, you get 25% increased movement speed. If you feel like your damage is too low, you can always run another damage gem. I'd probably just go with a Bane of the Powerful. And if for some reason you don't have a Gold Wrap to use, you could also potentially run a Crown of Valor, and then put on an Aquila Curus as your chest piece for more damage reduction if you need it. Next up, let's take a look at the Kanai's Cube. So for the weapon slot, you really only have the one option, the Dark Light. Again, Fist of the Heavens casts twice and deals 1000% more damage. For the armor slot, I'm currently running Krim's Buff Belt. Gain 25% run speed. This effect is lost for 5 seconds after taking damage. So if you feel like your damage is high enough, this is the choice here for the armor slot. But if it's early on and you don't have very good gear at all, low paragon, you do have the option of switching this to Cosset's Cord of Righteousness. Fist of the Heavens costs 40% less Wrath and deals 170% more damage. So the Wrath reduction doesn't really matter here, but this is a massive damage increase. So again, use this if you need to. And then for the Jewelry slot, we have the Ring of Royal Grandeur to make sure we get that six-piece bonus for the Aegis of Valor. One potential change that you could make, you could run just full six pieces of Aegis of Valor on your character, drop the Ring of Royal Grandeur, and run something like an Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. So that's going to about wrap it up, guys. This is really my go-to key farmer at this point in the season. Hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.